Welcome to SoFlow TV again everybody, it's your host with the most. So, today we're coming to talk about Peter Tosh, grand, uh, not grandson, I, was, I just read a story about Malcolm X's grandson and how he was beaten to death following some dispute, right? Malcolm X, the revolutionary. Peter Tosh, son, left in a coma following jail beating. Alright, so, people are saying who is Peter Tosh because I know said the new generation uh, even the most influential or the most significant of the past days they tend to not know about them or remember them unless somebody remix them in a today's time or something like that so Peter Tosh legalize it she will put and I will advertise it she will put legalize it yeah yeah and don't criticize it. But I don't know if I saw the words go, right? But Peter Tosh was a very start um, activist, especially for the legalization of marijuana, ganja, herb. And to see that his son was incarcerated on marijuana charges, then beaten into a coma, in a state where he act let me read the story to you first and then because some of the story is very very interesting to me and I want to know what my audience thinks if you think that this is purely coincidence or if you think this is a case of the system eating up certain individuals and their offsprings hmm all right so this one says New Jersey, United States. The family of the late reggae icon and marijuana activist Peter Tosh is seeking answers after they said that his son was left in a coma following an attack in a New Jersey jail where he was serving a six month sentence on pot possession charges. So, in other words, Peter Tosh's son was somewhere in New Jersey or serving time, six months in jail for possession of marijuana. I don't know how much marijuana he was caught with. Maybe it says it in the story here. Let's read along. However, we know for a fact that he was doing six months, right? Jawara McIntosh has been hospitalized since suffering traumatic brain injuries in the attack in February at the Bergen County Jail, Bergen County in New Jersey, where he, after he had pled guilty to marijuana possession, McIntosh of Boston, so he is from Boston. Peter Tosh's son is from Boston, meaning he has a Boston address, Boston driver's license, Boston, them kind of thing, that his place of record. What he was doing in New Jersey, I don't know, probably visiting family members or whatever, let's read on. McIntosh of Boston performed under the stage name Tosh One. His father was a Jamaican-born musician and activist who started with the Whalers alongside Bob Marley in 19, with the 1976 hit Legalize It, which you just heard me sing. Some people are going to say, butcher it, but you just heard me sing it. Remains a rallying cry for those pushing to make marijuana legal. So in other words then, y'all know that the system fight marijuana, right? And there are a lot of reasons why, because come on now, Science has proven that marijuana itself, if implemented in, for medicinal purposes, would wipe out so many pharmaceutical drugs that are on the market today with far less side effects, right? So you have a part of people over here that are constantly pushing for the legalization of marijuana on all fronts. And then you have a part that are pushing against it for whatever their agenda on both sides may be, right? Peter Tush himself has injected himself in the middle of this by creating what is known to be an anthem which has outlived him and continues to be a rallying cry for the legalization of marijuana. So Peter Tush came under heavy scrutiny by the powers that be from way back then. And if you know the lifestyle, not the lifestyle, if you know um, 
the times of Peter Tosh. Go, go read up something about him. Go watch some documentaries about him to get a little bit more familiarized. He died violently, right? And he was not a violent man. So, to see his son, actually, let me, let me show you the part of this story that is very interesting to me. Watch this. So, Jawara was also a pro-marijuana activist, just like his daddy. Hmm. Watch this. And he performed the song, Legalize It, which is his father's song. Uh, just like Ziggy Marley, them uh, get up and uh, sing one of Bob Marley's song. Jawara got up and performed his father Peter Tosh's song, which is a rallying cry for the legalization of marijuana. He performed that song outside of the New Jersey State House in April of 2014. During a rally pushing for the state of New Jersey and federal lawmakers to legalize or decriminalize marijuana. Ja, you see that? And where is he doing time for possession of marijuana? New Jersey. Where is he beaten into a coma? New Jersey. While incarcerated for marijuana, doing time six months for the possession of so this is very i don't know if this circle of events or this chain of events here is purely coincidence i want you to comment in the comment section below and tell me if you truly believe that this is purely coincidence so reading on with the rest of the story Attor attorney jasmine rand said that the family has filed a notice that it plans to sue the county of bergen and also wants the U.S. Justice Department to investigate this matter. The family said, My heart cries not knowing what happened to my son. That's his mother, Melody Cunningham. Not being able to talk to him because of the conditions that he is in. I am trying to be strong for him. I have to be strong for him. His sister, Nyambe McIntosh, said, that they haven't even been given a solid information about what happened, what took place. Rand said the county hasn't been forthcoming about providing evidence into what happened to Jawara. A spokesman for the Bergen County Sheriff's Office said that he was not immediately able to comment. <laughs> McIntosh was also arrested in New Jersey in June of 2013 after police said that they found more than 65 pounds of marijuana in the trunk of his rental car. 65 pounds of marijuana is a whole heap of ganja. That is not for no personal use, right? So, I can't be on one side and then um, criticize one side and then not the other side. Now, here's what I'm saying. When Luciano went through with his little sacrament and them hold up Luciano, I said to myself, and I said it out loud to my audience, Now Luciano, you've been around for a long time. Lord give me strength. That the Luciano there? Luciano got his visa and work permit taken away to the United States of America because of some marijuana salve that he uses for his throat, which he was found with crossing over at some travel point, right? Now, I'm saying, you've been around for a long time dealing with these people and their system. You should know that not even the scent of it you want to come through with to avoid scrutiny. Thus, go through Rasta. But, such wasn't the case, right? Now, for Jawara, McIntosh arrested, he was arrested in June of 2013, which is just a year earlier. 65 pounds of marijuana, that constitutes, that constitutes, um... Possession with the intent to distribute, right? That constitutes possession with the intent to distribute. So he's actually probably being looked at as a big time ganja dealer who is hiding behind the legalized agenda in order to further his drug dealing business. The family said that he is a Rastaman like his father and he was fighting for legalization of marijuana. Now, you can fight for the legalization of marijuana and a papa and when them hold you with a spliff, 
that's okay. If them hold you with an ounce or less, I would even still say that's okay. But when they are going to start to hold you with 65 pounds of ganja, matter of fact, I want to know how he got off if he was held with 65 pounds of ganja in the trunk of his rental car in 2013. How did he get off? Because there he was in 2014 singing in front of the New Jersey State House during a rally that was pushing for the state and legal and the federal government lawmakers to legalize or decriminalize marijuana at the front of the New Jersey State House. This is 2014. After being caught in 2013 with 65 pounds in your car trunk. So how the hell did he beat that charge? That's what I want to know also. Anyway people, this story is baffling to me. It's very interesting to me and I want to hear what my audience has to say about it. Do you believe that this is retribution? This is revenge from the system? Or do you believe that he actually went in there, got caught up, some other prisoner beat him and put him in a coma? What is your take on this? It's Soflow TV, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm up out of here. Big up to Peter Tosh. Rest in Uhuru. And I hope for a speedy recovery for his son Jarawa. Jawara. And legalize marijuana. Especially for medical purposes. I'm also an advocate for that. But them not catch me with no 65 pound in a mic. I mean not even bun weed. Right? I'm out. Peace.